Hey there, hi, welcome to the channel. I am Garrett and in this video, we're talking about some of the reasons your friends might be jealous of your home or why you're jealous of theirs. Now we have got some things to talk about, so let's get into the video. Now the first thing we have to talk about, the number one reason your friends are jealous of your home is that your house is not designed to make them jealous. Your house is your style, it's your personal taste, and you just have really great style. You have a personal style that reflects who you are as a person, and they are jealous of that. They want that for themselves, but not everybody knows how to develop, how to create that, and how to curate the things they love. And let's be real, you obviously have great taste. I mean, you're here, you're subscribed, you're a part of the Lachic family, of course you do, and your friends are jealous of that. Now I'm leaving that in, that's hilarious. And if you're not a part of the Lachique family and you've just been binge watching these videos, I see you. Now's the perfect time to hit that subscribe button and join the Lachique family. It'd also be a really great time to give this video a like. But yes, your friends are jealous of your personal style because it's not out of a page of a catalog or something you saw online. It's developed over time and everything has a story to it. It looks like a person lives there. And this is actually something we talked about in a previous video, how you don't want to design your home to look expensive because it looks like you're trying to design it to look expensive as opposed to looking like an interesting person, someone that's well-traveled, someone that we want to get to know. That is something your friends will be jealous and envious of, and I love that for you. And hey, it might encourage them to do the same thing. Something else that makes your home stand out and makes your friends jealous of it is the fact that it's not cookie cutter because it's personal. You've done things to it, you've made changes, it's a unique style, it's not just like every other home on the block. It's different. You don't want your home to fall into that place of being cookie cutter where you're just putting your things into a house and it's furnished. You want it to be designed. You wanna take your time, add some elements, paint some walls, add some interesting features or details into the space. And that doesn't have to mean it's overwhelming, overpowering. You can have any style and do this, whether it's modern, minimal, or ultra traditional. I think all of that's really fantastic, but don't let your home fall into this place of being cookie cutter where you've got the same thing everybody else does and it's just commonplace. When you take some of those features everyone's expecting to see and you upgrade them, you just make them individual and interesting and unique, your home stands out from the crowd and people instantly are jealous of that and they're like, where'd you do that? Who did that? Who had that done? I can't even tell you the number of times we have a contractor out on a project and all of the neighbors come up and ask for that person's information, ask what they're doing or what changes are happening. People wanna know because they love customizations and they're definitely going to be jealous of yours when you upgrade your space. You you know what is so funny but always makes someone jealous of your home is when your home is clean because it's not always possible for everyone to keep their home perfectly clean and tidy at all times. So when they come over to your house and everything is completely done, they are like, oh, how do you maintain it? How do you keep it like this? Let me actually tell you what I do. It's probably a little bit of a secret I shouldn't be sharing with you, but that's maybe not the point. Whenever someone is coming over to my house, I clean it top to bottom. Everything is put away, tucked away, tidy, it's dusted, mopped. It's completely cleaned every square inch. And then as soon as I welcome someone in my home, I say, you'll have to excuse the house. We've been so busy lately. And they're looking around like, if this is a mess, what does it look like when it's clean? Maybe that's like kind of a little bit of gaslighting, but that's okay. It instantly makes someone like, oh my goodness, you're living the dream. This house is amazing. It's spotless. It's so clean and perfect. A clean house says so much about who you are as a person. And it also is inspiring for other people because they're like, I really need to start taking care of my home better too. And a clean space is easier to relax in, which I always find is something that makes people envious of your home when it's really relaxing, clean, and beautiful. As a matter of fact, your home being relaxed is the next thing we need to talk about, and that's specifically all about mood lighting. You all know, I think 2023 is the year of the lamp. I'm obsessed, lamp lighting everywhere. We want that moody, warm light in the space everywhere, okay? You can do this through lamps, through sconces, through floor lamps. You can even get upward lit lamps and put them in potted plants or just in corners of the room to really create that dramatic lighting effect, that moodiness we all enjoy, because it makes us 
space feel more relaxing. It makes the space feel warmer and most colors, most spaces, most people look better at night than they do in the bright lights of the day. And that's fantastic. I love that for you and I love that for them. But also think about it. If we're going out for dinner, it's you and me, my husband, your partner, we're going on a double date. I love that for us. We're going to go to a steakhouse, a relaxing restaurant that's gorgeous. What's the lighting like? It's not fluorescent overhead lights. This isn't a cafeteria. It's a lovely, relaxing, luxurious, beautiful restaurant. We're in the atmosphere of the space. You want to focus on bringing that into your home because it's something that sets the mood, sets it apart. Your friends will be envious of the feeling your home has. Next thing that is making your friends jealous of your home, and that is antiques and vintage. Everybody wants what they can't have. And if you have a really cool, one-off antique or vintage piece, nobody can have it. They can't get it. They can't get the same thing. And I love that for us. And it also lends character to the space. I always say a room should always have one vintage or antique piece in it just to build and develop character. So if your home is very new, bringing in an antique piece, something wood, something with a little bit of character, some detail to it, maybe it's got a little bit of wear and tear on it also brings character. It lends authenticity to the space. It makes it feel warmer, it makes it feel more interesting, and that piece has a story, which is also really great. It may even be a one-off piece that nobody else can have, and I think that's so fantastic because not only are you getting a story about that piece, how you came to have it, but also nobody else can have it, and they're like, oh, Where'd you get it? Where'd you go? Where'd you find this? Oh my goodness, it's so beautiful. What website did you use? Where can I find one? It's a conversation. Because let's be real, you know someone for a long time, you're gonna have them in your home that's your friend. Sometimes you run out of things to talk about, right? Let's talk about the antiques. I love that for us. I also love to set out some coffee table books that are different, rotate them through so we always have a topic to talk about. I think that's really wonderful as well. But having something vintage, an antique, something that is not on trend currently, something that's different and unique, will make your friends jealous because they can't have the same thing and they want that character that that piece has. Antiques and vintage are really, really amazing and we love them, but something else that reminds me of what your friends can't get is actually things that are custom. If you have something done to your home or you have a furniture piece made, upholstered in a certain way, that's custom, that's a one-off, that people can't just replicate or go out to the store and buy, they can't have it and they will be jealous of it. Oh. I love that for you. I think that's fantastic. Whether that's you get an older piece of furniture, like a, an older sofa or a set of chairs, usually they're a little bit better quality and you can have them custom reupholstered. Now you're hitting like two birds, one stone, right? You have a vintage and antique piece and you've had it customized. Forget about it. They can't get it. They couldn't touch it. Oh, I absolutely love that. And the same thing goes for artwork. Like if you're having a piece of artwork commissioned or you found a really cool vintage piece, a smaller artist that does one-off pieces, nobody can get the same thing because they're all different. They're all unique. Because also that lends it to being personal to you. And we all know, like you see those influencers who literally just copy and paste exactly what some other influencer did. Or they're like, oh, look at that advertisement in this catalog. I'm gonna do the exact same thing in my house. And it's just like, the same thing over and over and over again. But when you have something vintage, antique, or custom, nobody can copy it because it's a one-off. And they would have to be able to find the exact same person, the exact same fabric, everything that you had done. It's impossible. So having something that no one else can have is definitely going to make them jealous of your home. Antiques, vintage, custom, all of that is really great in furniture. But do not forget about the next thing that makes your friends jealous of your home. And that's upgrades. That's adding features to the space that nobody else has. And I don't care what the space is. If it's your home and you're completely gutting it and redoing it, if you're like, you know, maybe I'll add a little something here or there. If you are renting, there are always changes and customizations you can make to your space. You know, maybe that's adding beams or a detail. Like, you know, I paneled all of the ceilings in my house and none of my neighbors have that. And they're all like, whoa, what happened there? Are you doing this? People love that. They want to know and they're jealous of it. So making some of the those changes can be really great. And even if that's painting a room a certain color, adding some beams onto the ceiling, all of that is really great customizations. But don't forget, if you're in a position where you're renting and you can't make all sorts of changes to your home, like you're not tearing out walls, you're not adding beams onto some landlord's ceiling, oh, you can always do little things like changing out the light fixtures. You have an electrician out, they take the old one down, put the new one up, and when you leave, 
you have that electrician come back out and put the old one back up and you take the new one with you. You can always do things that will change the entire space and make it completely different from everyone else in the building, the complex, the neighborhood, all of that is easy to do. It doesn't always have to be super expensive. Be on the lookout for all of those things that will make your home stand apart because that is what will make all of your friends jealous. One thing that will make your friends jealous of your home is rooms feeling open. You want to be able to see the space. And a part of this is all about kind of how to make a small space look larger. Use furniture with taller legs and you can see more of the floor. Use furniture arrangements that allow you to see more of the baseboard on your walls. But in my home, I try to always make sure the corners of rooms are visible when you enter them because that makes a room feel massive, gargantuan. I don't care how big or small the space is, if we can see the corners of the room, even if it's just one or two of them, it will feel huge massive absolutely i love that so be sure if you're tucking things into corners they're more open in nature like a chair or like a table that has open legs where you can see under them and see into the corner where the baseboards meet that makes a room feel massive huge and open also consider using furniture layouts that allow you to see more into the room when you first enter also look for furniture that has a lower back on it that can make a low ceiling look taller you can add vertical lines into a space to make the ceilings look higher there are lots of tricks of the eye you can do to make a space look bigger than it actually is. And if people think your house is bigger than it is, they're going to feel jealous that their house is not as big as yours, even if they're the exact same size. So remember, it's not about the actual size of the space, it's about what you're doing to that space that makes it feel more open and the layout feel more accessible that will make your friends jealous. Something that I love and I always get comments about that people also love are fresh flowers and a fresh scent. You know, I'm a scent sensitive person. I do not like a lot of heavy scents in the space. And I find that a lot of actually designer fragrances or like designer candles, they kind of just smell like dirt or they're very heavy. So be on the lookout for scents that are light and fresh that make your home just smell clean. There's nothing wrong with your home having no scent as opposed to one that's overwhelming, but also bring some fresh florals into the space. Go out into the garden, into the yard, but don't go into your neighbor's yard and clip some branches, some flowers, just to bring a little bit of life into the space. And when you have a fresh feeling space, it feels bright, it feels open, it smells wonderful, people take note and they are jealous of that. They love a space that just feels bright and open and fresh and that smells good. We don't need really insanely heavy scents. I don't need everything to be perfumed. It's too much. It gives people a headache. They don't like it. I just like a house to be clean. Okay, I think that's good enough. And then we can have some beautiful florals filling the space. Give me some life, give me some luxury. I absolutely adore that. Now, with that said, I do mix faux and real florals in together in my home. Maybe not together in the same arrangement, but in my home. And basically, if you're at a space where you can see the flowers right there, if you can reach out and touch them, you want them to be real. Put them on your coffee table, put them on the center of the dining table. But if they're on a bookcase on the other side of the room, they can be faux because people are probably not going over there and being like, let me smell the flowers sitting on this bookshelf. That's weird. And the reason I say mix real and faux is because it's just not realistic to have 20 floral arrangements in my home that need the water changed on them every day. And I want to keep them looking as good as they can and being as fresh as they can. So like, could you imagine the amount of time it would take? So mixing real and faux is okay in my book. So long as the faux looks very real and you don't overdo it, I think it can actually be really good and a good way to lower the maintenance of your space. When it comes to friends, this next tip that will make them jealous is also very true. Quality over quantity. Having a couple of really, really good pieces instead of a lot of cheap pieces will really make a difference in the way your home looks and feels. And it's all about taking your time. You know, you can get into this place where you're like, let's get it furnished, let's get it looking good. You go out and buy everything brand new and then it's all like kind of falling apart after a while. It's maybe not the perfect piece. You bought it in a rush, so now you don't want it and you're getting rid of it. It's a waste of money. Focusing on quality over quantity makes your home look more expensive and feel more luxurious, even if it's not. Sometimes you don't have to spend a ton of money on cool pieces, antiques and vintage. If you take your time, you can find really amazing deals on them. So don't rush into anything in your home. Be sure you're being very thoughtful and mindful of the pieces you bring into the space. And maybe for a while your friends think you're a minimalist. Hey. 
that's okay. It's also just more sustainable to focus on quality over quantity. So I would rather have a few really good pieces than a lot of them that are no good because then it's just gonna make my home look cheap and nobody's jealous of that. Nobody wants to hang out in that and it's not comfortable for me. Quality over quantity every time will definitely make your friends jealous. Well, there you have it, everyone. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please share with me in the comment section down below. And I wanna hear from you. What is one thing your friends have that you are so jealous of? Share with us, sound off in the comment section down below. Give this video a like and hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. Turn the bell notification on to get notified every time I upload. And I also know that you know someone it might be one of your friends that's a little bit jealous of you and that's okay. Share this video with them because friends help friends. And I will see you in the next one.